Hello and welcome ladies and gentlemen to the Status Report highlight for the 8th of May 2018. I want to start by just mentioning Dr. Jones' N4 script mod for offline 0.63. He's managed to make a tradable NPC from a zombie where he can use bullets as currency. It's one of the first community made mods with N4 script out there. I'll leave links in the description for Dr. Jones' full video. Now let's get on to the status report itself. Following an entire week of stress tests, the team has gathered around to report on the results of our first public stress testing phase for 0.63. We've received so much feedback from you guys and we're going to dive right into it. But first, let's hear a few words from creative director Brian Hicks. I can't begin to tell you how great it has felt for Peter and honestly the whole of the team to see all of your reactions to the work that has been done on 0.63 and Daisy as a whole. For what seems like years, a big part of the team, especially design and animation, have worked on documentation and internal prototypes without hardly any feedback. To finally be able to start sharing some of this with you all, and thanks to platforms like Twitch, YouTube, Mixer, etc., and hear your thoughts has been the most uplifting since the early access launch on Steam. It's a good day for Daisy and the Daisy community. I cannot wait for 0.63 to hit experimental and stable as well, of course, and begin to be able to spend more time with you all in this new Daisy experience in longer play sessions. With that said, I feel Daisy has reached a point in which I, much like Dean left years back, am no longer needed. I've spent years talking to you all, working with the team and collaborating with Peter on where we want Daisy to be, how we want Daisy to feel. Now that you have started to see and touch Daisy.63, I feel like our plans, our dreams are finally within grasp. Peter Nespesny and the design team have a rock solid grasp of what Daisy is and what it needs to be. All of our systems have been discussed, documented and discussed again. For the last year I have been slowly taking more and more of a back seat, and I'm sure some of you have noticed and tried to push folks like Peter, Adam and others to let their voice be heard. Over that year I have made plans for what is next for me and worked for free with Peter Nespesny in a design consultant role. I won't lie, it hasn't been easy, and there have been times where Peter and I both were uncertain about how 0.63 would be received or how it would perform under full-scale load. I don't want to be a broken record, but I am so happy that all of those concerns have been washed away. Daisy has been my life, made my life, and been so ingrained in who and what I am that I won't be able to just walk away. Hell, I've just crossed 7,000 hours between two accounts. From here, I look forward to opportunities back home in the States, being closer to family, and playing Daisy as much as I possibly can. I just want to say thank you, Brian, for all of your hard work over the years, and supporting myself and the community as much as you possibly could. Always putting the community and Daisy before yourself. We wish you all the best in your future, Brian, and we will miss you, but we know you'll always be around. <laughs> and of course, as this is a highlight, I will be highlighting the next few sections, as some of these are very long. I'll try and find the best bits for you. Here we go, with lead producer, Eugen. Distant sounds, not hearing a gun or where it's coming from, or megaphone audio not traveling far enough. All of these things require tweaking, as most of the initial configuration has not seen a revision yet. We will be looking into these as we progress with experimental. Distant lights either flash from a gun or camp far, far away. Now these issues sadly have no simple solution, but we are talking about possibilities and will experiment with those as we get further down development. Inventory visuals and functionality. A lot of the underlying tech is in, and the visuals are still work in progress. However, there are a lot of things we want to improve and work on during the ongoing testing. We want the game to feel physical and consistent in its behavior, as well as making sure things are telegraphed to a player when they need to be, focusing on the user experience of crafting and manipulation. The idea is there, it just needs a lot of bug fixing and tweaks. Besides the issues mentioned, there is an amazing amount of gameplay feedback, from the crosshair interactions, reload mechanics, aiming, shooting, controls, actions and more. We will be looking at what has been said and discussed and I know Peter will talk about these in much more detail over the next few status reports. As already mentioned before our next goal is multiplayer testing with Infected and I'm definitely looking forward to that one. And now lead designer Peter. He's written a buttload of text here so I'm going to try my best to just highlight little snippets but I would recommend as always to read it all in full yourselves if you have the time. There's a lot of good information here, but I'm going to pick a couple of paragraphs to read for you now. As most of you know, our goal is to make everything to feel as tangible as possible, so you really need to be making things over time, at least most of the core actions. In this respect, we chose to have reactive raise of hands, to maintain the active stance in which you can endanger others or defend yourself against them. You need to hold a dedicated button, 
Once you remove your hands from other controls, the character should be rendered as relaxing and harmless. Telegraphing intentions and what's going on is one of the most important aspects of DayZ. And basically what this means is being able to tell what the player or character you're looking at is going to do before they do it. However, from the feedback, it seems like there is no problem with holding raise to become actionable, but more with the actual switching to iron sights while the firearm is raised. Currently, this is bound to middle mouse button or left shift, which obviously feels awkward and clunky, especially when it's on another hand than the one controlling aim and shooting itself. One solution is a double click of raise and then hold to enter ADS directly, but unfortunately, proof of concept which was available in the first stress test was implemented in a very crude way and it felt very unpleasant, confusing and did not meet with understanding. Now for me personally with ADS, I think that hold right mouse button to raise arms oh, and just, just click right mouse button to ADS would work better. I think that's how Daisy has always done it. It's how it's done in Battlegrounds. I think that probably would just be the easiest just for muscle memory because we're used to that anyway. Not 100% sure why it has to be different, but we'll have to wait and see. The dev team might come up with something really nice. And to be honest, the left shift to ADS actually felt okay for me. I mean, there's going to be a lot of people where it's not feeling okay because like Peter says, it's on a different hand to the aim and shooting hand. But anyway, let's carry on. Another thing is that after the rewrite of the weapons, we are missing implementation of dispersion, random cone-shaped spread defined by angle. Previously, it was used as a kind of inaccuracy from the manufacturing process, where long barrel weapons were most accurate and short barrel ones were least. We are not using it anymore as I think fighting some random nonsense on mid to long ranges is over the top, as players are already challenged enough by mechanics like sway, recoil, zeroing, actual bullet speed and drop, all that combined with character movement which is enough, however, if it's applied only while using hipfire, it can help to introduce much welcomed inaccuracy on mid to long ranges. For now, we will try to address it with modified sway, while not in ADS, to see how it works out. Also, there's a possible exploit which I didn't know about, now with the hipfire, where you can fire immediately after pressing the button for raising firearm, where the dot can be abused for super precise aim. Of course, this will be fixed down the road, so what this exploit does is keep in the little dotty crosshair when you just raise your arms with the gun and you just instantly get in a, a, just a laser sight with your gun, which shouldn't happen of course. Seems like I already made it into a solid wall of text even as I wanted to comment on other stuff as well in no particular order like weapon change animations, bleeding, hit impacts, falling, stamina, HUD and tendency icons, head bob, fake inertia, clipping issues in first person, inventory, infected behavior, melee combat, balancing in general, lack of content and more. But I would better stop right there and leave those for the next status report. And of course, peeps, that is a snippet of Peter's section. Always go back and read it full when you get the time. There's a lot of juicy info there. Now let's move on to lead gameplay programmer, Mirak. So, now about the infected status. Some of you have met them in our recently released offline mode and noticed that they can go through obstacles sometimes. This is known to us and it's happening because we decided to save some performance on collision detection. Therefore, we've disabled collisions between AI units and static objects during movement. The navigation system should keep AIs on the navigation mesh, and that's the reason why we disabled this collision detection. This bug is one of the highest priority, and hopefully we will fix this navigation issue soon. About infected and their features, basic movement, stealth mechanics, and fight logic are in place and we are iterating them. Designers are tweaking infected senses, which means they are balancing how infected can spot a player depending on player's stance or clothing which they wear. Well, that's pretty interesting. If you're wearing bright clothes, the infected are more likely to spot you. Oh damn. We've added some more movement features right now, turns and crawling. Crawling will be there a little bit later because not all animations are ready now for this movement state. Of course, you can at least see on screen the transition animations in game. As for turning, I think it will be best if you look at these samples on screen now to see what that means. I believe these will make stealth and fighting funnier. And that's all for now from Mirak. As you can see, stability improvements and infected are our current milestones. Hopefully, in the next status report, we will be able to show you more from other game features. Now I will read you a few words from sound designer Philip. Over the last couple of weeks, we've made several improvements. We've implemented ambient sound attenuation for interiors, which is the noticeable and realistic change to ambient sound effects from outside to going inside a building, and added a smooth transition between outdoor and indoor states. The number of ambient sounds that can play simultaneously is now higher, plus we've added a few new controllers, so sound can react more dynamically to weather changes. Regarding doors, we redesigned door open and close sound effects and added over 200 new sounds in the process. 
On a different issue, the localization of sound sources in Point 62 did not work very well. The visual position did not correlate with the position of the sound, especially with animals, which you can hear over long distances. This slight offset made them hard to locate. Man, yeah, I love hunting animals. This is why we decided to redesign vector panning. We are very happy with the changes we did for stereo configuration, and now we are concentrating on surround configuration. Oh, one more important thing. You can now buy the awesome, comfortable GT Omega racing chair using my discount code, Falcon. All links and the discount code will be found in the description below. If you want a new chair, you know where it's at. And that's all for the status report highlight for the 8th of May, 2018. Good job I cut that down. That would have been like 20, 30 minutes long. Damn, Peter's section is large. But don't forget, read it in full for all the information that it contains when you get the time. Don't forget also to check out the community spotlight that Beatty has put together down the bottom of the status report for the community's created content goodness. Thank you for subscribing. If you haven't, subscribe. And don't forget to hit that like button, as it all helps the channel out a lot. Let's discuss DayZ's development in the comment section below. Don't forget to leave your feedback on the feedback tracker. All links are in the description below. And I'll see you peeps next time.